Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 24. And today we're going to be dealing with functions. And functions are really the heart of programming. And just a few things about functions, a little uh, list of things. Functions create reusable code that you can use over and over again. You've already seen functions in PHP. There are tons of them. For example, we've dealt with the range function. And functions can have statements which they execute underneath them, but also they can have arguments. And arguments basically are parameters that you can put into functions to make them very versatile. And for example, let's take up the range uh, function that you use in PHP. We were able to actually generate a list of numbers between a max and a min with a certain step value. Found that to be a very useful function, and you're going to be creating your own custom functions as well in this particular tutorial. Of course, the syntax of a function goes like this. You declare it with the function name. You create your own name. My funct is, for example, here. Give it an argument if it's needed. Not all functions have arguments. I've actually had lots of functions that I create that don't have arguments, but many of them do. And then there's a statement that's executed that uses that value or that runs and accomplishes some task. And we're going to be creating these functions over and over again. Now, unlike strings in PHP, and I say presently because this could change, we saw this change in Flash as the language became more and more strict typed, is that functions basically are case insensitive. But that's a bad habit to uh, actually get into, actually, is treating them as case insensitive. I suggest that everything that you create in programming, functions or variables, you treat as if they're case sensitive. And pretty much I sometimes use camel capping, which is a small letter first and a, a large letter second. For classes, you want to use large letters. There's a number of conventions that we'll be going through as we continue with this uh, tutorial. Also, let me make the point that in object-oriented programming, functions are called methods. So often you hear me talking about functions, and I'll just switch them. Sometimes I'll call it a method. Sometimes I'll call it a function. And it just goes in and out. And that's my mistake by not being rigorous. But if you hear me say method, I'm really meaning function. And sometimes when I say function, I'm really meaning method. So <laughs> it just depends on what context it is in. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first function. This is a very simple function. We're just going to, once again, use the declaration function. So I'm going to camel cap it, which means I have a small letter than a large letter. And then I have my little parenthesis, nothing there, and then my curly brackets, which has my statement in there. And all I'm going to do is echo out the word, hello world. So let's go ahead and run the function and see if it works. Now, in order to run the function, if I just define that function the way it is, and I run it, nothing will happen. I actually have to call the function. And this whole calling the function is extremely important. And so let's just run this function right here. We'll save it and run it and see what happens. Nothing, because I didn't call the function yet. So let's go back and uncomment this, and let's call the function. So basically, whatever you give the function name is, whenever you list that in your program, then it's called. So it's going to call it. And there it is. It prints out hello world. Very, very simple function, about the simplest one you could create. And so now we're going to continue to go on and build more complex functions. But you remember, it's just this simple. So a few things about this is that functions can have arguments inside, which makes them extremely flexible. In this particular uh, case, I did something called hard coding. What well, hard coding is, basically, you have to hard code everything into the function for it to occur or output. But you don't want to hard code. You actually want to use arguments to make things very flexible. So if I wanted to create hello something else, not just hello world, I could actually uh, use an argument to do that. And that's what we'll do in this next example. So once again, use arguments for flexibility. These functions don't have to be defined first. I want to make that point as well. Uh, typically in good programming, you'll go ahead and define your functions all at first, and then you'll call them. But you could actually switch this. You could actually have put uh, this a particular uh, uh, hello world at first. And there's a preprocessing process that occurs in PHP, which is sees all your functions, grabs and preprocesses them, so they're ready to be called. So you could have uh, defined it, uh, called it first, and defined it later. I always like to define my functions first if I can. So now we're going to do we're going to put an argument in our hello world. So what I'm going to do is comment out this uh, piece of code here and put in the argument. So in this next method, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to actually do the same type technique where I have a function, and then I create a name, hello world2, and I put in an argument. And that argument can be anything. And I want to echo out hello world, use my little brackets, uh, my argument, and then uh, print that out to the screen. And so what I can do now is in that argument, I could put any word I want, and that will basically replace that argument right there. So let's run this code so you can see it. And it says hello China. Now let me just say a few things as far as human readable is concerned. This is not very human readable. So I really like my arguments to have names that make sense to me. So I'm going to come along here and say, well, let's just put place in there. And place in there. 
And notice I can change this argument, which has nothing to do with the input. This is just a dummy argument that says when you hit there, when you run the function, whatever's in that space right there, put it there. So now let's run the function now. And once again, hello, China. Well, I could say hello, uh, Florida, for example. And hello, Florida. So you see how basically versatile that is. Whatever I put in that argument place in that function, it'll appear in the function itself. So arguments extremely versatile in functions. You want to use them as much as possible. So in this next example, let's go ahead and comment this out. I'm actually create a little function calculator. In an earlier tutorial in lesson one, we actually created a, a calculator using uh, simple methods. We're going to do that again here, but instead by using functions. So what I'm going to do in this example is actually declare the variables. And this makes my function very usable. Because if I declare these two variables right here, I can actually uh, use them as arguments. And I can actually just worry about changing these variables here as opposed to changing them here every time I do that. I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. But first of all, in this particular example, I'm actually using use the first four basic mathematical expressions. Let's create four functions for their, those and create a simple uh, calculator. So I'm going to use addition. That will be one of them. Subtraction. That will be another one multiplication and division. So those four basic uh, methods in mathematics, we're going to actually create functions for each one of those. And it's very simple. I'm going to create two arguments, uh, 5 and 3, and go ahead and let those be arguments in my function. I'll just give it any name I want. In this particular example, I'm going to add it, so I just called add it. And so I put a variable 1 and a variable 2, and I just create a method below that, or a little line of programming. I'll call it my sum equals variable 1 plus variable 2. So whatever I put into my arguments, it's going to take those and add those together. And then now here's something that's really important. I'm going to actually return that. So for example, if I run this function and I don't echo it to the screen, nothing's going to happen. So what this return method is going to do is going to act like a break. And it's going to return whatever variables there. And it can return arrays as well. So that's extremely important to let you know. It's going to break out that function. It's going to return that to the screen. So I'm going to show you how that works real quick. I want to make a few points here. I could actually hard code the numbers in. I could just put 5 and 3, for example, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Or I can use my variables, my variable 1 plus my variable 2. Now, the advantage of using the variables over hard coding is that if I decide to change these two variables here, 5 and 3, I just have to change them here. I don't have to change them here every time I decide to change a number. Let's go ahead and run the code. So in the first one, I had 5 plus 3 equals 8, then 5 plus 3 equals 8, so it both did that. But now let me come along here and actually change uh, the argument here. Let's make this uh, 10. So when I change it to 10, I would have to come along here and change this value here. But since I've already changed it in using a variable, it's changed automatically. Now let's take a look at the two and run those. And so what I've returned to the screen is still 8 because it's hard-coded. And so you want to get away from hard coding and actually get to this ability where you can actually be very flexible by using arguments. Okay, Just an example of how, a uh, simple example, but important example of how using arguments can really uh, make things very flexible. Okay, so that is addition. And now let's uh, go ahead and go to the next one and do subtraction. And once again, I just have called it a sub it, and I can choose any name I want for a function. And I have my value 1 and value 2, and I'm just going to subtract it, and then I return that to the screen. And so in order to return that to the screen, all I have to do is run that function. So let's take out this line of code and show you what I'm doing. So I'm using these curly brackets to tell you what I'm doing. I'm setting that to an equal. I'm doing a dot the function, variable 1, variable 2. So that dot the function, whenever I call the function, if it has a return, it will replace that function name with the return value. And that's how functions work when you use return. Get in the habit of using return a lot. Understand how it works. It's extremely simple. Let's go ahead and run this example. So in the first case, I did an addition. In the second case, I did a subtraction. So 10 minus 3 is 7. So now we're covering a lot of ground here. We know how to define a function. We know how to create functions. And we know how to add functions and subtract functions. The next two I'm just going to quickly go through, and that's multiplication and division. So in multiplication, I just have two variables, variable 1, variable 2. And then I just multiply them together. And then I return that to the screen. Very easy to do. And in division, I have in division I have one number divided by another, and I use a slash for division. But I have a problem here. In division, I can actually have an infinite number where I divide by zero, which is not defined. So I'm going to put a little if statement here, and I'm going to say, well, if variable two, that's the division part, is equal to zero, then just go ahead and print out the statement not divisible. So that's very powerful. And once again, I'm following the same format where I have my curly brackets. I kind of show that's a division, and I put my function here. And whenever I run that, that function will be replaced by the value. Let's go and run this real quick. And there you have it. You have addition, subtraction, 
multiplication and division. And let's run it one more time and I want to divide by zero and see what we get. So all I have to do is go up here and change my variable to zero. And when I divide by zero, I get can't be divided. Now what I love about PHP is we're changing between all these different formats. This was a string, the previous one was a floating number, and these are integers. And PHP doesn't care, it just looks at those and decides what it wants to be. So let's go ahead and review what we've learned so far. We learned how to create simple functions. We learned how to use arguments in functions. And we learned how to use variables to basically create um, very versatile functions and did the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and return method to actually uh, put a value out to the screen. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively, and we'll continue with functions next time.